Welcome back everyone. This is Anne from Shades of Color and Light and as you can see it is fall y'all. It is autumn and I am ready to do some autumn coloring. I think I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I was really excited to start coloring some autumn scenes and so I bought some new coloring books and this is the first one we're going to use autumn scenes coloring book. Teresa Goodwit Ridge is the artist and I have come to love her coloring books. So from what you can see I have a couple of different things set out here today. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to be coloring with watercolor twists. So these I know they're going to look like your Crayola twistables. Okay but they're actually watercolors. Let's twist one out here. I know I'm going to use this color for one of the flowers. Okay, but these are special. They're going to go on like a colored pencil, but I'm going to be able to, in the end, use a paintbrush with some water and create some really cool effects. So, the first thing I want to do is I just want to get you started here in what you need to do in order to use the watercolor on your coloring sheets. Now you don't have to do this, obviously you can just, just watercolor, but if you want to get a little bit more special results, I'm going to give you some tips. And the first tip is, you can use something called Transparent Watercolor Ground. This is by Daniel Smith. I tried to find this at my local Michaels and Hobby Lobby, I could not, so I, I did go to Amazon to buy this. And what this ground is, it's got like a glue-like consistency. If I can get this open here, I'll show you real quick. Hopefully it won't spill out. Okay, can you kind of see? It's just kind of like glue. And what this is going to do is prepare your surface for the watercolors. So all I did was I took a really simple, cheap, one-inch brush, brush that I bought from the dollar store, and I brushed on this transparent ground and as you can see it dries on clear. What it does however is it now makes the surface um, scratchy so it's kind of like a nail file in a way. It's going to be able to pick up and um, make this paper a little bit more fibrous so that it's going to be able to handle the watercolor or paint. Now again I've chosen to use these watercolor pencils. I could have chosen um, to use my watercolor pans or watercolor in any other form that you like. I'm also just going to use, you can use, I'm using these just craft brushes. They're not expensive brushes. I've got one with a very um, kind of like slanted. That's going to be a shading brush but it's a little bit more stiff. This is a very tiny brush and this is kind of one in between. We'll just see which one I use. Uh, for most of these projects I don't use expensive tools because I just want to use what I have or help you use what you have around the house. If it was a project that I was going to be putting a lot more time and effort into, let's say a painting that I knew that I was going to be hanging in my home for years to come, I would take the time and um, the added expense to buy really expensive good products. And the other thing you're going to need is something for your water. I get these little two ounce cups for my kids lunches from Walmart. They come maybe a hundred in a pack, something like that. I'm going to use two, one with water that I'm going to um, dip my brushes in and then one that I'm going to clear my brushes and plenty of paper towels. Uh, the last thing I recommend here lately is making sure you've got like a three by five card or some scrap sort of paper that you can test out the colors in. And that's all I think I have in the way of getting you set and started, except for this did, I let this dry 24 hours. Now it was dry a lot sooner than that, but what happened was is the paper was uh, crinkled, not crinkled, uh, warped if you might say. And you can kind of see that it's not super flat anymore. This is a thicker paper in this coloring book, but it's not as thick as a true watercolor paper. So we're going to see how it handles, okay? So to get started, I think I am going to dump out my pencils here and take them out of this container. Though, Don't you just love this container? 
um, I cannot pass up things like this when I see in the store. <laughs> I see all these colors neatly put in this package and I just, I can't resist. I love them. Oh, okay, and I see that there was included a watercolor brush there. I may or may not use that, I'm not sure. So, with that all said, I think I'm going to turn these the other direction so that when I pull them, the tip is out. Okay, that could be a bit awkward here. There's a lot of, of color pencils here. I've got 24, so don't mind my little awkwardness here. Let's get that together and let's get these turned around here for you. All right, let's get started. Since I know, I happen to mention that I do want to make, I'm going to go ahead and make these mums, these two flower sections here. And let's see, I want to do one purple and one yellow, which would look fine. I think I'm going to do this pumpkin orange. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll color the rounds of those mums yellow, use the purple, and then I will do the opposite here. I will color the insides purple and the mums here yellow. Okay, so let's get started here. And we'll see if these soften up a bit. I'm not sure that they will. Right now they're coloring like a very hard crayon. Now something just strikes me. We're gonna see how this, this is my first experiment using these. Something strikes me that what I could have done and maybe on the next sheet I'll be a little smarter once I see how these work. You know, we talked last time about using new medium and expanding our gift, using things that we've never used before. And so it's kind of nerve wracking in some sense because I'm doing this live. Um, and the thought just came to me that if I wanted the yellow to remain yellow that I could use my Prismacolor markers for that and then go ahead and layer on top of that the purple that would make the because the Prismacolor is alcohol based that's not going to bleed with the mix with the water okay uh, so that's gonna be a thought that I could do for next time if I wanted this yellow to remain but I think what we'll go for is a kind of like a, an ethereal look with that there, more of an impressionist look. So some of the colors will blend together. All right, now on this down here, I'm going to actually color in the flowers. And I might find that, we'll see, I may layer with some other colored pencils later or some gel pens. I might do that and I don't have to be too exact because I'm going to come through with the brush and a lot of this will kind of get spread out. All I will have to do is kind of touch the tip of these flowers and let's see so I've got my yellow there, put that there for now, I don't see any other flowers. But I do want to add just a touch of green inside here, maybe around, around in here, put some green in there, and I'm really excited to see how these work. I've been wanting to use some watercolors for a long time. I've actually got some ideas for some watercolor projects that don't actually involve an already drawn for me coloring sheet so that might be something for the new year in 2020 lots of different projects that I've got in my mind to do so I think that's done for that Put then over here let's layer in some of this purple down here
I just love the look of mums in the fall. They add such gorgeous color. Oh, and I think I missed a little bit of yellow. I don't know that that will really matter in the end when I go to put the water in here. Okay, now let's add some green back in. I do have a couple shades of green. It looks like I just want to layer in some green in between here. Okay, because you would see a little bit of green in between. Okay, so let's just layer in between there. Yep, I see some spaces for some green. Okay, it's gonna look like sloppy coloring, I guess, for a while until we add the water in, and that will really make rough lines smooth. I really like projects where I can do sloppy coloring <laughs> and I don't have to be so perfect. That's my kind of coloring and painting. Looks like a little green. Maybe that's why, you know, sometimes I think of the Impressionists and their paintings. I think of them as um, it's more my style. I don't like to paint realism okay so I don't I don't really want to look at something and have to get every detail right and I think that's one of the things I like about the impressionist is um, when they painted you could tell exactly what what it was let's say Monet and his haystacks or his lily ponds and they they did look like what he was painting but he saw in a different way and made you kind of see a haystack from a different perspective you know who would think that in an art gallery we would have um, galleries of haystack paintings you know who would think that would be interesting but it is very interesting because of the beauty and the way that he he painted and he depicted what he painted. And I'm reading a very interesting book right now. It's an art book. Let's get this hard. I'm kind of coloring a little harder here. Maybe I want to get maybe a darker shade over here. It's a book on color and color theory. And it's very interesting because the author is trying to get us to understand that we can see in different, we can see color differently. We can see colors and shadows differently. And that's what she said was different about the Impressionist the painters, is they didn't see, just see a shadow as being black or gray. They saw purples in the shadow, they saw pinks, they saw blues, they saw differently. And um, that's one of the things that set them apart. Now. We're going to use several different colors here. Now I'm going to use for the leaves. We're going to use some yellows, oranges, browns, reds, and a couple of greens. So I think what I'm going to do quick here is I'm going to layer in a couple of green leaves. Because this isn't completely fall yet in my picture here in my world. As Bob Ross would say, you can put whatever you want in your world. And if you're coloring a picture along with me, maybe not the same one, you can put the color 
colors in it that you like. All right, now let's add, this is a darker green. Let's see what this one will do. Add a darker green on one side, and then I'm gonna come through and I'll layer in that lighter green that I used at first. And all of these are remaining to be like coloring with a very coarse pencil. Definitely not smooth, they are definitely rough. Okay, and my hope is that once I add the water to this, that let's say a leaf like this where I'm adding three colors, that it's all going to kind of blend in together and give us some really interesting looks. Okay, now. You know, I find that I said that I watched back one of my videos, my recent videos, and I kind of chuckled at myself because I was using several words over and over. So in that particular video, every time I was set doing something, I said, okay. And um, so I don't know what I'm going to be saying this video. over and over I have no idea but when I watch it back I might give myself a little laugh about that too so I had got these two new books the next book I got I got really two amazing fall colored books that I just fell in love with online wait till you see the next one I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll show you that one. And I left them, I got them in the mail and I left them on my desk and never thought a thing about it. And then later after I got home uh, from work and cooked dinner and things, I came in my office and my so did my daughter, who immediately noticed the new books. Her eyes got really huge and, oh, she just went crazy about these these new books that I got and wanted to get in them right away and I was kind of like no no don't touch them you know she's six and she she's pretty good with things but I was like oh it's a brand new book I don't want her to you know get my pages kind of crinkled or anything so I was just like oh look at him in a little bit you know later later but she would not have any of that as soon as mommy gets a new book she wants to see it and of course she wants to see it because she wants to pick out a page to color. She is my colorer. So out of this uh, book by Teresa Goodridge here, she's already colored two pictures out of it. One of them for my sister and one of them for her teacher. So I'm sure she's going to want more too. And she definitely wanted several in the other book. I'm telling you, this other book that I'm going to color here in a couple of the next videos has some really amazing sheets that you are just going to love and probably want to get your hands on the book. So be watching for my upcoming videos. It should be a lot of fun. I don't know about where you live, where you're watching from, if fall has hit your area yet, but it's definitely hit where I live. It's been in the 50s this past week. Today is a cold 46 and a windy one when I went out for my walk this morning after dropping the kids off for school. I had to put on a winter coat, gloves, something on my ears, and I had to pull my hood up because it was so windy. And I don't walk long, maybe 10 minutes or so if that, just down in our cul-de-sac, and sometimes that's enough. Now again, if you just joined me, don't worry that it seems like I'm just kind of scratching things in. These are again 
watercolor twistable colored pencils and I don't have to be real accurate with these because I'm going to layer in I'm going to use water the water add in the water okay and once I add in the water it's going to blend these colors together so right now I'm just kind of getting on these leaves especially I'm just doing blocks of color knowing that the water is going to do a lot of my work so some areas I want to do a dark yellow actually this is a yellow orange I just love false colors of flowers just amazing how beautiful the trees and the tree lines become you know and fall just seems like a very short season doesn't it you know it's like high school football starts and school year starts if you're in that mode if not it's kind of like September just kind of creeps right up on you and before you know it we've got these cold temperatures and and there's no in-between you know this year we had um, it was was it the jet stream went upward and so we had you know some 80 degree days we had actually actually I think it was in the 90s it was it was record-setting days record-setting heat and we go from record-setting heat to all of a sudden we're wearing winter coats and so sometimes in this area there's just there's not enough time for the in-between and that's one thing that I do wish is we had a longer fall I just I love the season and you know if you think about it let's just say in the spring and the summer because everything is green the trees are green the grass is green um, it takes the focus of our eye let's just say kind of downward so by that I mean the the gra the trees are green right that's kind of like one visual vi one visual color there is the green and so our eyes aren't necessarily drawn upward but our eyes are drawn downward because that's where all the color and the beauty is in the spring and in the summer the beauty is in the flowers and <clears throat> excuse me the colors of the flowers and the flowering bushes and so forth the color really isn't in the air but in the fall our eyes are directed upwards because of the color that's in the trees and we're fascinated then by looking upward all right now I did say let's just see what I've got here let's see the difference this is where our scratch pads gonna come in handy we've got three browns here okay and just pulling them this actually looks a little gray to me so let's test that yes that is gray and I do plan on using gray there okay that's a light brown and that is more of a true brown so I may use all three of those in conjunction together for the bench and the window box okay we will see that but for now I think I want to just add this brown oh and then let's see what's this right here let's check this one out okay so that's even a different one I think I'm gonna go for that one and put a couple um, let's go here okay 
Now there may be some areas that I don't add water to. Let's make a couple of brown insides to these. I may not add water to everything like these branches. I doubt that I will because those I just want to stay looking like a branch. I don't think I need to add any water. Okay, and then this looks like it's brown to me. Maybe if it's the tips of leaves or it's a little piece of hay that has kind of fallen. Okay, so let's see here. And then obviously we're going to have brick right behind this. And so what I'm thinking about for the brick, okay, I'm just going to add a couple of brown leaves in here, okay? A couple of all brown. And let's add in this lighter color here, okay? That's almost like a gold or something. Hopefully that will be really beautiful with water. I think it will be. So our eyes are drawn upward in the fall, aren't they? We've got entire tourist seasons built around in the East Coast, going through the mountains and looking at this gorgeous, gorgeous color. I'm starting to really like this. Um, so now, let's get some, let's get some yellow in there. And I'm gonna use, let's try this one. Let's see what this one is. I think I use this. It's like a yellowish orange. Let me just, get a couple of these in here. And I think I'll add a brown in there real quick. I was looking today at how random the changing colors were in the trees. You know, there was nowhere that I could find a pattern, let's just say, where it went, you know, red. These are leaves here. Let me get some green in here red, orange, yellow, or anything like that. I know we talked about the rainbow last week, but from tree to tree, I really couldn't find any pattern. Probably because, you know, people didn't plant them with a pattern in mind. Wouldn't that be interesting though, if we planted with fall color in mind? Now, I'm sure it's been done. I'm gonna have to maybe look online I'm sure that somebody probably has found a way to do that, to plant for the rainbow. I know that in landscaping, you know, they'll plant for spring color, fall color, so that you can get an all season of color in your landscaping. So what are we missing here? I think we're missing some pops maybe of yellow. Let's add in some more yellow. Let's add in some yellow onto that orange. Some other colors. Yeah, that's, I think we've needed that pop of yellow. That bright yellow there. Yes. We used to have a tree that did turn bright yellow. Oh, it was gorgeous. I think it was a maple tree can't remember exactly but I think it was very very stunning and let me do do a little bit of brown up in here and this guy here okay well, I cannot wait to get to the watercolor part of this and we've got one more leaf there let's just go for yellow. Um, actually more than one leaf. Let's do let's make this guy kind of some green and red at the same time. He's just kind of turning half and half. That looks like a red and green apple kind of. Let's just get a solid red in here. Okay. 
All right, up oh, one more. Let's get a bright, bright red. I'm gonna go very dark on that, almost with a flat tip. And that's not gonna work with the flat tip because it keeps kind of almost breaking the tip. So we're gonna stick with coloring on the side like that. All right, now, I, that's one of the words that I say all the time now. <laughs> I wanna see my perfect pumpkin color. Let's just try out, that's got some pink in it. Okay, I don't want that one. Let's check this one out. Okay, that's looking closer to what I'm looking for, and then we'll just check out this here. What I'm gonna do is layer on a darker orange here at the lines. And then I'll layer in the other two oranges. So remember what I talked about earlier. We don't always have to see shadows as being brown or black or gray. We can see different colors within the shadows of the objects that we are coloring. So I am seeing orange and then remember that color that I said had a little too much pink in it. That was this one, I think. Okay, right there, the other colors, I'm gonna keep that. Okay, so, so let's just give some of that down here. Just cast some of that. And then again, I'm not gonna color perfect because my water is gonna pick up this color and blend it in. Um, actually, I mean, I'm not really minding this at all, personally. So we'll see how much I blend that in. If I didn't have these blendable watercolor, oh, here is that color, I think. This one had the pink in it. Just add a little bit of that. You know, the other reason that this may be a little bit scratchy, like I mentioned, could be because of the ground, the watercolor ground that I put down. Because that's given this a very textured, I don't know if you can hear that scratchy kind of feel. I probably just really irritated somebody by scratching that, kind of like running your fingernails on a chalkboard. Because I liked the look of those pumpkins, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. I'm not gonna break the mold. I'm gonna just go for it. And let's see how this turns out here. And I guess I can, I don't, I'm gonna do this so I can finish kind of like these lines, but I don't mind that I'm going outside that border because In the end, it would not matter. Okay, now I've got a different, there I said it again. Okay, now I might have to <laughs> do a little video count there when I'm all done to see how many times I say, okay, now. <laughs> did not want to do that. Definitely. One thing I didn't bring, maybe that I bring my eraser. That is something else I've been wanting to show all of you, is this eraser. It is a retractable eraser. What a fantastic gadget. I think I found this, it's called a Pento Click Eraser, and I wanna say I found this at Hobby Lobby. Cannot remember how much it was, but it is an invaluable little tool. 
I have no idea if these, oh, that's going to end because I have something dark in there. I'm going to have to clean that tip off. I don't think I want to do that. Even though pumpkins may have a little bit of dark in them. But I do want to create, let's see if I can get this purple, pur purple pumpkins. I'm going to add that pink in there. People, I've seen all sorts of different colors of pumpkins. White ones, orange ones, purple ones. So, and let's just say, let's stick with one more orange pumpkin, okay? There's gonna be a lot of green. Let's just make this guy orange, okay? So, what do we have? We have some rocks down here. Let's make those, I'm going to make those gray because I want to lay down what would be right there. Probably grass. Okay, so that's what's going to be. I'm just going to color a light green in all of these spaces here. Yep, I do think that this is scratchy because of the ground that I put down. Okay, so let's just go let's put some green there. And then right under a little puppy here. And I'll put this grass here, even though that's probably the, there. That will define the area, I like that, because that will define the area of the brick. The brick will end right there. So let's just kind of go here. And then everything above there will be the brick. I'm going to go ahead and do these. Green, just add a few different colors of green to each leaf. I'll make these green because who knows? Some people put fake, fake flowers inside their flower boxes sometimes. I can't remember if I ever did that or not. I used to have at my other house. I used to do some fantastic window boxes. And in fact, one day I was out doing my window box and some person, I have no idea who they were, stopped their car and yelled out to me, what colors are you gonna do this year? And I I don't know, I might have yelled out something, but she, she said, I always look forward to the colors that you use in your window boxes each year and boy that really made me feel so good that somebody actually noticed my window boxes that was really that was really cool let's make sure but I did you know I talked last week about using color stories color in uh, on my job and I guess I've used color everywhere in my life so I used to love each year to go to our local greenhouse, Benches Greenhouse in Elmore, and pick out different colors. Different colors meant using different flowers to achieve the look that I wanted. will highlight that with brown but whatever colors in that hole has got to go to the background okay and she did some of these wood looks for us so we don't have to do that we're just gonna get different colors because this is an old chair this is a new or an old bench look at it it's seen some wear so I'm just gonna kind of scratch in some brown here I 
did not originally intend to put so much brown in here. I'm thinking that my brick's going to have some brown. So I'm going to have to give that some thought here. Now i got to finish up with the brown that I started. Just kind of rough that in. And then I'm going to rough in some gray also. And maybe, maybe a little bit of black, okay? Um, I do feel in a bench like this. Now she's got some black, so I don't want to do too much. But let me, let me get some black there because, again, this looks like a very old bench, and that's what we want it to look like. So we're going to have some color. We're going to have to think about some things now. Our kitty cat is not going to be brown, nor is she going to be black. So we're going to have to, and calico probably won't work because of the browns and the grays and so forth that I used here. So she's definitely going to have, let's make that a little blacker right there. There we go. It's starting to look like an old bench already. Definitely not one that I would want to sit on. <laughs> I do not like sitting on benches outside. How's that for one of my idiosyncrasies? If I see a bench like this outside, I would avoid sitting on it <laughs> at all costs. All I would think about would be bugs and spiders and different things that would be ants crawling on it and I would just say, yuck. That up to somebody else. Okay, and so then you see underneath there, once you get these a little bit scratched in there, you see in the background we're going to have that brick to deal with. So now let's get this. This is the gray. Yep, this is the gray. Okay, this is the color that I really just want to fill in so that when I bring my water into this, that it is all going to blend. And that is the hope, right? If I was doing a YouTube Live, I would take a quick vote. What color should we make that kitty cat? Um, I'll give him pink ears or give her. We'll pretend she is a girl. Kitty cat. I could make her all gray, I suppose. Or I could pretend that her owner dyed her hair. I have seen that. Soccer. There was a one of the moms worked in the pet field and she always brought her pets every week. They all they all had differently colored dyed hair. It was hysterical. And that was her job and that was good advertising. Give her Give Kitty a pink nose and some pink in her ear. And let's see. He is going to have a black nose. So I'm going to have my hair right now. Okay. Little kitty, 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 what color should we color you? Maybe what we'll do is a mixture of gray and orange. Okay, so we'll go some orange. Orange fur, we'll scratch that in. And that way, this kitty cat is just gonna blend right in. 
with the scene, right? Just blend her in. She's one with the pumpkins. And I picked this picture because of these animals being so peacefully sleeping that it just reminded me of just this perfect peaceful day one of those days when everything's right with the world and a little bit more orange <laughs> don't know if I like this kitty cat but not much I could do when I did a Maybe I'll add a little bit of brown. We'll see what happens when we add the water. Okay. So, not only is our cat going to blend with the pumpkins, but she will also blend with her seat. And what would really pop right here? Let's just see if we had a bright red wooden shelf. Something I haven't used yet is blue. Now that could be an interesting, like a country blue. Not a sky blue, but a country blue. So let's check out these blues here. Now that is a gorgeous blue. This one's probably a blue green. Let's just test them out here so you can see. That's more of the sky. I don't want sky. I'm looking for, boy, these are really close. Let's see what the difference is. This one's a little lighter. This is the country blue. Ah, should I do it or not? Let's, all right, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna use, where's my black? Make sure I'm not using the purple, I don't want purple, all right. So, I said so again. I saw a post from the Pioneer Woman on Instagram. She did a, they redid the Brady Bunch house. And then she did an episode of her cooking show there in this Instagram post trying to think of what the word was that she said oh my gosh I, th I think that's what it was oh my gosh and they start clocking how many times she said oh my gosh you know she was obviously touched when she walked into the house because it looked just like the set from the show now there. I said no. I think that's going to be my word. Sometimes you find in your coloring sheets where the artist does not follow a line and they don't take it all the way through. So let's watch this line here. Should go over into here, but it doesn't. I am going to follow the line though with my coloring. I did not bring a marker over here with me or I would have added a dark line just to keep that line going. point will be for this picture when I'm all done. I'm going to add in the windows right now. The I always put light in my windows. I'm not a person that wants to see dark in the windows. So, uh, kind of like you guys remember um, Thomas Kincaid he was the painter of light and he always had light in his windows and that's what I want to do too I don't want to do a dark window and so that's again something that we can take as a creative license here I want the look of there's light inside this house. I 
you know, that's really what I want myself to look like too. I want myself to look like there is light inside my house, my personal house, that there's light in me, not darkness. It's really bright in this house, okay? So <laughs> that is going to be really pretty once I add the shading onto that. I am so nervous to get started on this, but here we go. What I've got now is I've got two cups. This one's a little more fuller for rinsing water. And then this one here, I really do not want to load up my brushes heavily at all. And I've got a paper towel. Let's just start. I'm going to start with this tiny, tiny brush. And let's start on, start on the leaves. Okay, so I'm going to dab into some water. And I might be able to use a little bit more. Do all the green leaves first and clean my brush. I'll try and get all the white. Yeah, and I'm going to add a little green to that leaf there. This is going to fill in all those white areas. And to be honest, I think it's going to be a little more time consuming than what I initially thought was I would just be able to, and maybe I will in some of these areas. Wow, look at that one. Really beautiful. Okay, and then I think while I have the green on the brush, I might just add a little green to some of those leaves there. I really have no idea what the water will do to this paper though, being this really isn't a true watercolor. So I'm trying to, that's why one reason why I wanted to keep the water level down a little bit. If that muddies in here, that's fine, because a lot of times, even like on some of these example leaves here, there's kind of a yellow, green, brown thing going on here, which would be fine. Um, so try when you're doing this at home or wherever <laughs> kind of made it sound like it, you couldn't do this paint this anywhere but wherever it is that you're painting and you're using paper like this it's not truly watercolor paper and just fill in some of those those whites around there it can be filled in with a little bit of green you want to try not to scratch the paper too much because, again, it's not true watercolor paper. And if you do, if you scratch too much, you will not like the result because it will just basically scratch the paper. And okay, I'm just going to try and flow with the green a little bit here. Get the look that you you want. And 
and maybe with the video I will do more of a close-up with the before and the after. look at that and if I keep it my brush a little bit on the drier side I'm gonna get some of those really pretty lines that I just didn't really want to lose I really enjoyed that it's part of the pumpkin there is seeing the various lines and color so I want to keep it I'm going to try and cover up as much white space as I can without losing the color variation in there. So go very lightly on the water and I did decide I'm using my tiniest brush that I have. Now, another idea would be, I, without losing the variegation in these pumpkins, once this dries, then I could go back through and where I see white, a little bit of white in here, what I would do is just come back through with a colored pencil. That's really beautiful right there. I love that. It's so bright. That's what I think I will do. I will come back through. Okay, now I'm going to take this line again on this pumpkin all the way down here so that I can get my lines. Otherwise, if I have to deaden my line right there, I could put a piece of paper there. Okay, now I'm probably not going to try and mess with that yellow too much. If I get a little bit like this in there, that's fine. Let's go up top here then to some of our oranges. And I may just go right over top of the reds also. Yeah, I love the way that looks. Absolutely love that. Those are my favorite. Let's see here. Did I get that one? Yeah, that red. I just love the red. Thank you. 
I may not do anything to the chair. Let's just, let's do a little kitty cat here. I think I like the lines in that, so I think I'm going to keep that. Okay, but I've got our little kitty. And let's get our, our dog here. don't want to do is blend the blue of that collar so I'm trying to steer clear of that again next time I would color that with a marker or a colored pencil all right we will go for our brick sure my experiment worked too good on the brick because that marker I did not use the Prismacolor okay so definitely if you're going to do something like that you're gonna to have to use the what the alcohol based marker okay because those little dots that we made that look so good they are blending right in And it's not that it looks terrible, terrible, terrible. It's just that I think I like the looks of it before I added the the watercolor paint a little bit better. One thing though that I do wish, I don't know how it would be possible, in a coloring sheet like this, there are times though that I wish that the black lines that define certain things would just kind of disappear and instead of you seeing this black line here, I wish that you would just see the, the um, coloring that has come through that would define that particular object as opposed to seeing and maybe maybe what I'm saying is let's say on this pumpkin instead of seeing these black lines that you would just see the orange shading and that would be a case where sometimes um, just going freehand and doing your own coloring you could you can do that Instead of drawing it first, you wouldn't see the lines. Okay, now I do want to do, let's see, I gotta do this guy. Let's clean up my brush a little bit here before I get into that purple there. Let's see. Yep. Can't remember if I did those leaves or if I did. Now, all I've got left, I'm going to use my 
clean water because I'm gonna come through with a very light hand on this. I don't wanna make it too yellow because we've got those windows there, so it may be kind of a scratchy looking window pane here. Or not a window pane, but a window frame. Let's just see now, when I wet this yellow, let's see what happens here. take what I was just thinking about was taking some of this yellow and streaming it kind of out but I don't think I'm going to do that at least while it's wet maybe okay I'm going to go you know what okay so if I tip some of that a little bit of gold in there it kind of looks like the light is touching it I want to do let's just do a little bit of water in through here I want that to look a little old and all right I'm just gonna do a very light hand here Thank you for watching today. I really love that you spent your time with me and I will see you soon. Please like, subscribe, and of course share this video. 